Hey everyone, in today's video, I have decided to show and discuss our top 10 Rolex watches that were recently auctioned at Sotheby's. From vintage pieces to more modern icons, I will explain why these watches are collectible and great uh, historical watches from the brand. So grab your cup of coffee and let's dive right in. Our first uh, standout piece was the uh, lot 242 with the reference 116519 Daytona, which is a remarkable white gold automatic chronograph with a stunning meteorite dial. It dates back to approximately 2008 and showcases a dial made of meteorite, giving it a unique and captivating appearance. The Rolex Daytona Meteorite reference 116519 is a discontinued model that offers a unique opportunity for serious collectors. With its uh, stunning meteorite dial and the red sporty hands, this edition of the Daytona Meteorite is a highly thought after timepiece. For less than 50,000 US dollars in a private uh, sales, it presents a more affordable option compared to the current versions of the Daytona Meteorite going for significantly more, while that discontinued edition is equally if not more appealing. This timepiece combines the elegance and craftsmanship that uh, Rolex is known for with the fascination of owning a piece of the universe. It is a true gem to consider adding to any discerning collector's collection. This exceptional timepiece was estimated to fetch between 35 and 45,000 at auction, but it surpassed expectations selling at $50,800. Our second watch was the Lot 505 that presented an exquisite timepiece known as the reference 8171 Padalon. This automatic triple calendar wristwatch crafted in pink gold dates back to approximately 1959. Rolex has a lesser known history of producing complicated timepieces, including the Rolex Padalone. The vintage Padalone released in 1949 is one of the only two triple calendar moon faces watches made by Rolex in the 20th century. Its large size at the time of release and circular shape earned it the nickname Padalone, meaning big fried pan in Italian. With an aesthetically uh, pleasing design, the Padalone features a calendar on the outer bezel, a moon phase uh, on the sub-seconds uh, dial at 6 o'clock, and a day and month indication below the Rolex signed crown. It is powered by the caliber 8295 CPL, which had limited production, making this watch quite rare. The Padalone has achieved a significant prices at auction, with some models selling for over a million dollars. Today, the Rolex Padalone reference 8171 remains one of the most thought after and desirable Rolex watches due to its rarity and unique complications. This remarkable timepiece was estimated to be valued between $30,000 and $60,000 and achieved a final uh, price of $40,640. If the dial wasn't refinished and the case remained unpolished, it could have fetched significantly more. Our third lot of interest was the lot 438, uh, where we had a stunning timepiece up for auction. The reference 116519 Daytona, uh, the remarkable automatic chronograph is crafted in uh, white gold and it dates back to around 2008. But what truly sets it apart is this uh, mesmerizing green Chalcedony dial, which catches the eye with its unique captivating charm belonging to the infamous Daytona Beach series. In the early 2000s, Rolex introduced the Beach Daytona series featuring four 18 karat white gold models with vibrant art stone uh, dials in blue, green, yellow and pink. Our focus is on the 2001 edition with a chrysoprase dial, a gemstone variety of Chalcedony known for its beautiful green color resembling a green apple. The dial's intricate design includes recessed sub-dials uh, applied in 18 karat uh, white gold Arabic numerals and the bold red Daytona text adding a pop of contrasting colors. Accompanied by its uh, original green alligator uh, leather strap and the 18 karat white gold falling clasp, this watch is a true gem. It's worth noting that the case, dial, and movement are all signed, but unfortunately papers are not available for this particular lot, which is considered important for the authenticity when it comes to Daytona Beach series pieces. The estimated value for this uh, beauty was set between 25 and 50,000 US dollars, and the final bidding reached $50,800. This timepiece remains a true gem for watch enthusiasts and collectors alike. I would advise uh, to anyone considering adding this piece to their collection to look into complete sets only. You will pay more, but ultimately those sets are the most valuable and collectible. Our fourth watch was the Lot 430, where we had an exceptional timepiece for auction. The reference 16233 Dejust Olympics. This uh, stainless steel and uh, yellow gold automatic wristwatch is a true collector's item dating back to approximately 1996. 
This specific timepiece holds significant historical and symbolic value as Rolex created these special editions to honor the Olympic Games in the 1980s and 1990s. However, those watches were exclusively available in the International uh, Olympic uh, Committee and were not offered to the public. This specific watch is absolutely extraordinary as it was presented in 1996, exactly 100 years after the first modern edition of the Olympic Games, coinciding with the event held in Atlanta. Its outstanding condition is worth noting with sharp proportion and the uh, green sticker still intact on the back. The watch even came with its punch Rolex uh, guarantee, confirming the IOC as the purchaser and bears the 1996 date and the 039 client code from Switzerland. Given its historical significance and remarkable preservation, the appearance of this watch, especially in such condition on the international market, is an exciting opportunity for watch collectors. The estimated value for this uh, unique timepiece was set anywhere between 15,000 and 25,000 US dollars, and it achieved a binding price of $20,320 at the auction. Now let's explore lot 506 that featured the reference 3335 pre Daytona. This uh, stainless steel chronograph dating back to approximately 1959 is a true vintage gem. Rolex has consistently demonstrated its leading spirit in the realm of watchmaking since its establishment in 1905. The brand's design have not only endured the test of time but have remained remarkably relevant even surpassing their original era. A prime example of Rolex design mastery can be seen in the reference 3330 and 3335 chronograph watches created in the early 1940s. These timepieces are highly coveted today due to their limited production, larger case uh, dimensions, and the stunning aesthetics. The pre-Daytona chronographs were ahead of their time with the bold and striking cases measuring 38mm in diameter, which was huge back in the time. Additionally, Rolex incorporated a unique feature of a third 12-hour register, setting them apart from other prestigious watchmakers of that era. The reference 3335 is exceptionally rare, with only a handful of examples appearing in international auctions over the past decade. Their scarcity makes them very desirable among collectors. This vintage treasure was estimated to be valued between 15,000 and 25,000, but the final bidding exceeded expectations, reaching a price of $30,480 at the auction. Although the watch exhibits signs of wear and restoration, it still represents a remarkable piece of horological history, showcasing the allure of vintage timepieces for collectors and enthusiasts alike. Next, we have the Lot 510 featuring the reference 5512 Submariner, a vintage stainless steel piece that takes us back to around 1961. The 1950s marked a significant period for Rolex, during which the brand solidified its reputation for producing exceptional tool watches. The Submariner, the GMT Master, and the uh, Mille Gauss were introduced catering to the needs of divers, pilots, and scientists. However, it was the Submariner series that truly epitomized Rolex in the 1950s. Launched in 1953, the Submariner quickly evolved through various references with overlapping production runs and incremental improvements. By 1959, the Submariner reference 5512 emerged as a mature version of the iconic dive watch. It retained successful features while introducing a larger 40mm case uh, size and the inclusion of crown guards for the first time. The reference 5512 holds historical significance as to the point where the Submariner began to take its present day form. With variations in crown guards, dials, glossy versus matte, lines of text, two lines versus uh, four lines, and depth uh, rating placement, matters first versus uh, uh, feet first, the reference 5512 offers collectors a captivating range of options to explore. The scarcity of certain configuration, such as the square uh, crown guards, glossy uh, gilt dials, and two-line versions contribute to their desirability and higher market value. As the Submariner series continued to evolve, the reference 5512 left an indelible mark on the Rolex dive watch legacy. This vintage Submariner was estimated to be anywhere between 8,000 and 12,000 US dollars, but it achieved a final bidding price of $10,795. With its tropical dial and vintage appeal, this timepiece holds a special place in the hearts of watch enthusiasts, capturing the essence of a bygone era. Our Thevens watch was the lot 281 that presented a unique timepiece, the reference 4343 Queen Midas Cellini. This uh, bracelet watch, crafted in yellow gold, dated back to approximately 1976. The champagne dial adds a touch of elegance to this vintage beauty. Gerald Genta, a renowned watch designer, is widely recognized for his iconic creations, including the Patek Philippe Nautilus and Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. 
However, before this notable timepieces, Genta designed a special watch for Rolex called the King Midas. Inspired by the legendary uh, King Midas of ancient Greece, the watch featured an unconventional and asymmetrical near pentagonal uh, case resembling the Greek Pantheon. The design also incorporated a unique positioning of the crown and King Midas engraving on the case. The King Midas boasted a minimalist dial in champagne silver or rare amber variants with only essential elements such as the Rolex logo and the Greek characters for Midas. Crafted in solid uh, white or yellow gold, the watch was highly luxurious and exclusive, making it the most expensive timepiece in the Rolex lineup at the time. The King Midas was also notable for being one of the first Rolex watches to feature a sapphire crystal. The watch was accompanied by a unique box resembling an ancient Greek amphora adding to its allure. Among its famous wearers were Elvis Presley and actor uh, John Wayne, while the King Midas also made an appearance in the James Bond film The Man with the Golden Gun. Today, the Rolex King Midas is regarded as a rare and collectible timepiece cherished for its unique design, historical significance and association with prominent figures. The estimated value for this Queen Midas Cellini was set between $8,000 and $12,000, but it achieved a final bidding price of $19,050 at the auction. Let's move on to the lot 512 with a reference 5513 Submariner, a remarkable stainless steel automatic wristwatch from around 1967. This iconic timepiece features a classic back dial that exudes a timeless charm. The Rolex Submariner reference 5513 is often regarded as the quintessential uh, vintage Submariner model, even though it wasn't the first Submariner ever created. It embodies the classic design elements established by earlier Submariners, but with a distinct vintage charm that sets it apart from modern iterations. Released as a more affordable alternative to the reference 5512, the reference 5513 lacks chronometer certification, but offers the same durability and water resistance. Its nearly 30 years production span allowed for significant dial variations, including glossy gilt, matte, and tritium uh, options, as well as changes on the crown guards, bezel, uh, bracelets, and dial details. The reference 5513 offers an accessible entry point into the world of uh, vintage Rolex Submariners, with price uh, ranging from around 15000 for uh, later models to six figures uh, sum for rare versions like those with the Explorer-style dials. Despite its uh, affordability, the reference 5513 retains its status as an iconic and highly collectible timepiece, representing the last era of truly vintage uh, Rolex Submariners with features like the acrylic crystal or the friction fitted bezel. If we look at the condition report, uh, we can see that the bracelet accompanying uh, the watch is generic and not made uh, by Rolex. Unfortunately, the bezel is not present too uh, on the case, affecting deeply the value of the watch, and the watch has a service crown indicating a maintenance has been performed. Moving on to the dial, it displays a tropical color resulting from signs of moisture damage due to age and wear. The estimated value for this reference 5513 Submariner was set anywhere between $8,000 and $12,000 US dollars. However, it achieved a final binding price of $10,160 at the auction. This timepiece, despite its condition report, remains a thought after collector's item as it encapsulates the heritage and allure of the legendary Submariner line. And I think this is a very interesting look for a vintage Submariner without a bezel. Next is the Lot 493, which showcased a remarkable timepiece, the reference 2574 Oyster, which was retailed by P. Orr and Sons LTD. The Rolex chronometer reference 2574 produced in the late 1930s as part of the early Oyster line gained significant popularity due to its notable event associated with. It became renowned when Sir Malcolm Campbell set a land speed record of 272 miles per hour while wearing the Oyster, showcasing its reliability. Another iconic moment in Rolex history was Mercedes Glide's English Channel swim, during which she wore an Oyster. Following this feat, Rolex placed a full-page advertisement in the Daily Mail to introduce the Oyster to the public. Originally designed for men, this mid-size watch, also known as the boy size, has a diameter of 29mm, uh, excluding the crown. It is powered by the original high-grade Rolex chronometer movement, which was adjusted for six positions and considered superior to many uh, Rolex watches of that era. The estimated value for this uh, Oyster Reference 2574 was set anywhere between $3,000 and $5,000. US dollars. However, it achieved a final binding price of $6,350 at the auction. Despite uh, its age and the sign of wear, this timepiece holds immense historical value and continues to capture the interest of watch enthusiasts. It serves as a testament to Rolex's enduring legacy in producing reliable and thought-after timepieces. 
we have reached the final lot, the lot 5 to 1, which featured the iconic reference 1665 Sea Dweller. This uh, stainless steel automatic piece with a date function takes us back to approximately 1978. The black dial exudes a sense of elegance and sophistication. During its initial decade, the Rolex Sea Dweller model featured red text for both Sea Dweller and Submariner 2000 on its dial. However, in 1977, Rolex introduced the reference 1665 Sea Dweller, known as the Great White, with an entirely black and white dial abandoning the red text and the Submariner name. This design change helped establish the Sea Dweller as a distinct dive watch separate from its Submariner counterpart. The Great White earned its nickname due to its monochromatic uh, dial and it maintained this iconic dial style for 40 years until the release of the reference 126600 Sea Dweller in 2017. Along with the dial update, the case back engravings were refined. The Sea Dweller was originally an enhanced version of the Submariner, offering greater water resistance. The Great White reference 1665 played a crucial role in differentiating the Sea Dweller as its own line, specifically catering to saturation diving and professional use. Various dial variations known as Mark Zero to Mark IV were produced during its five-year production period, further adding a value and rarity to the watch in the vintage market. The reference 165 Great White remains a highly specialized and respected tool watch in the Rolex history. The estimated value for the reference 165 Sea Dweller was set between 15,000 and 25,000. However, it achieved a final uh, bidding price of $19,050 at the auction. This timepiece, with its uh, rich history and desirable features, continues to captivate collectors and watch enthusiasts. It represents the enduring legacy of uh, the Sea Dweller line and stands as uh, the testament to Rolex's commitment to precision and durability. And that concludes our journey through the top 10 Rolex watches auctioned at Sotheby's in uh, June. Uh, from the exquisite craftsmanship to the rich history embodied in each timepiece, it's clear why Rolex holds a special place in the world of luxury watches. These watches, carefully selected for their exceptional design, vintage charm, and enduring value, showcase the best of what Rolex has to offer. Whether you're drawn to the allure of a vintage submariner with a tropical dial or captivated by the contemporary elegance of a white gold uh, Daytona, there is a Rolex for every watch enthusiast. The appreciation for these timepieces goes beyond their monetary value as they represent a blend of precision engineering, iconic design, and the pursuit of horological excellence. I really hope you have uh, enjoyed this journey through the top 10 Rolex watches from this uh, Sotheby's auction. If you are as passionate about uh, luxury watches as we are, don't forget to uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all things horology. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and see you in the next episode.